Hello everyone, this is Miss Reese. I'm gonna be going over the essential topics from the unit three test. And I'm gonna go over some problems with you as a, like, a somewhat of a review, and then you're gonna try some problems on your own. So in the first problem here, we are solving for our three variables, X, Y, and Z. So we are using some of our angle relationships that we learned. So the first one here, we have 124 degrees. Now we can solve for X here because they are vertical to each other. So X, I'm gonna write vertical. That would be the relationship that is used to solve. Remember vertical angles are congruent. So we should be able to say that X is 124 degrees as well. Now, when we're solving for Y in this diagram, well, I know that these two angles here together form a linear pair, and that means they're supplementary. It means they add to 180. So we can write out linear pair. Remember, linear pair adds to 180. So I would just take 180 and subtract 124. And when we do that, 180 minus 124, well, 180 minus 120 is gonna be 60. Subtract four more, that's gonna be 56. And then in our um, last problem here, we're solving for Z, and we know that's a right angle symbol. This little symbol here means 90 degrees. So I'm gonna put 90 degrees here in total, and then we would just have to subtract 72. Okay, so 90 minus 70 is going to be 20. Subtract two more, and we are left with 18. Okay, um, so now I'm going to have you try a problem that's similar. So we have here a 43 degree angle. So I'm going to have you solve for y first. What would the measurement for y equal? Okay. And in your second problem, you are going to be solving for X using the relationship between these two angles here. Okay. And then in this last part here, you're going to be solving for Z using this angle relationship. Great. All right, and in our second question. Um, so this is the angle relationship that we just looked at. We looked at vertical angles um, in the last slide. So these two angles here, they are vertical to each other. So remember, vertical angles are congruent. So I should be able to write out the equation for x minus 3, and I would set it equal to 53. So I want those angles to be equal to each other. Okay, so let me use this here. We've got, if we set the equation for x minus 3 equal to 53, we would just have to solve for a variable. We could add 3 to both sides, and that would be 4x equals 56. And then our last step would just be to divide by 4. You're welcome to also get out a calculator. Let me go back to my tool. So our calculator here, let me move myself. There we go. Uh, 56 divided by 4. We're going to have 14 for x in this example problem. Okay. Now I'm going to have you try one on your own. Okay, using um, your angle relationships, you are going to solve for x in this diagram. All right, let's try another problem. Let's go to the next screen. Okay, there we go. All right, so in this diagram here, we have a right angle. That's 90 degrees, remember? So we would want to take these two angles and add them together to equal 90. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and instead of typing that equation, I'm just going to go ahead and write it. So we would have an x minus 18 plus the 25. We're going to add them together when we're equaling it to 90. These are, um, a right, this is a right angle pair, complementary angles. Okay, so we're going to take um, 
negative 18 and 25 and add those together. And that should give us seven. So it's X plus seven equals 90. And then all you'd have to do is subtract seven on both sides. So X is 83. All right, you're gonna try an example here. Question three. So using the same angle relationship, solve for X. All right, and in our angle relationship here, um, this is a linear pair. Remember a linear pair is a pair of angles that come together and add to 180. So for this problem here, I should be able to take 3x plus 30 and set it equal to 180. And then I'm just solving for x from there. We can subtract a 30 on both sides. That should give us 3x equals 150. Divide by 3 on both sides. And x is 50. So we used our linear pair angle relationship to solve for that. All right, you're gonna try question number four. You're solving for X using um, the angle relationship. Great, and our problem here, I was having, um, Students write in all of their angle measures. So we have here, this would be 72, it's vertical, right? And then we have this ang these two angles here, we'd have to solve by subtracting from 180. 180 minus 72 is equal to 108. So I'm gonna put a 108 here and I'm gonna put a 108 here as well. And then in the diagram or the angle relationship kind of below, basically all of these angles should be able to slide down on this transversal. So this angle here, which is, oh, let me go back to my pointer. So if we have this angle here being 108, this angle would also be 108. That's corresponding to it. The 72 would match up with the 72 down below. 72 and 72 would match up, and then the 108 would match up below as well. So I'm gonna have you try, um, for this problem here, I'm gonna have you solve for two different angles. Okay. So first angle I'd like for you to solve for, I'm gonna say this is X. What would the, be the value of X in this diagram? And the second angle that I'd like you to solve for is this angle here y? What would be the measure of y in this diagram? All right, here are angle relationships. These are corresponding. They're in the same relative position. So corresponding angles. That means these angles, we're gonna go ahead and set them equal to each other. So I'm gonna create my equation, 11x minus 47. We're gonna go ahead and set that equal to 6x minus two. So we're solving for x. We wanna bring all our x's to one side. I'm gonna subtract a 6x on both sides. So 11 minus six, 5x minus 47 equals negative two. We can add a 47 to both sides. Oops, that's a seven. Add 47 to both sides. And that would give us five X equaling 45. And if we divide by five on both sides, X would equal nine in this diagram. And we set those equal because they are corresponding angles. All right, you're gonna try an example problem. You're solving for X using an angle relationship. Great. 
Let's try another problem. So here are angle relationship. Um, these are what we call same side interior angles. So same side interior. And that means same side interior angles add up to 180 degrees when we have parallel lines. So basically I can take each of these here add them together, set it equal to 180 degrees, All right? So we would get 21x minus six plus 60 equals 180. Okay, and we can combine like terms that would give us 21x plus 54. When I combine the 60 and negative six equal to 180. Subtract 54 on both sides and 21x equals, we are gonna take 180 and we're gonna subtract 54. And that's gonna be 126. And then we're just gonna divide by 21 on both sides. So 126 divided by 21 is gonna be six. So x is six in this diagram. I'm um, gonna try a similar problem here. You are solving for x in this diagram. All right, let's go to our next question. Um, here we are just using the triangle sum theorem to solve for some of our missing angles. Um, so in our first diagram here, you are solving for the measure of angle two. And I'm actually gonna have you solve for this angle here first. And we're gonna do both of those angles. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, 180, which is a triangle, and I'm gonna subtract 67 and 62, let's see what we get for that. So 180 minus 67 minus 62 would give me a total of 51 degrees. So that's gonna be this angle inside the triangle, 51. And then if you're trying to find an angle that's outside the triangle, um, you can do the same thing. You could take 180 and you could subtract 51 because you know those two angles together um, form a linear pair. And so that would be 129. I'm gonna put 129 here, 129 degrees. Um, and you, some of you may also know the shortcut that you could, to find the outside angle, have just added the 62 and the 67. That would have been a shortcut. 62 plus 67 is 129. And then here we're solving for a missing angle. We've got a 90 degrees here. We know in total triangles 180. We're gonna subtract the 90 subtract the 46, and we should be left with 44 degrees. So this angle here would be 44. So we're using the triangle sum theorem for that, and maybe some linear pairs, depending on if we're finding outside angles. All right, so I'd like for you to find, you're actually in this diagram, we're just using triangle sum, you're gonna find angle T, and then what is the measure of angle D? All right, we're using the triangle sum theorem in this problem as well. We are gonna add all of these angles here and set it equal to 180. So if I'm looking at everything, all of my angles, um, in terms of variables, I only have two X for variables. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add all of those numbers. So I'm gonna add 58, I'm gonna add 87 and 11 and I'm gonna get 156. So I got that 156 by adding 58, 87, 11. And I'm gonna set that equal to 180. Remember there's 180 degrees in a triangle. And we can just subtract 156. That would be two X equals, so 180 minus 156 would be 24. And X is 12. So we're using the triangle sum theorem for that to solve for a variable.
All right, so here we have your triangle sum problem. Um, you are going to be adding the angles in that triangle together. So I'm going to give you a little recommendation combining your like terms. So combine all your X's together. Combine all of your Y's together. And then use the triangle sum theorem to solve for X. Okay, and I did skip a problem. <laughs> so I'm gonna have you try this problem as well. Um, it's very similar to this sample problem here. What do we got? This one, uh, where we were solving for the outside angle as well. Okay, so you're gonna solve for X first in this diagram. And then after you've solved for X, you can solve for Y in this diagram. Uh, we'll skip this triangle sum problem. You already did a triangle sum. So we're gonna move into Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so which side is the hypotenuse in this diagram? So remember hypotenuse, we always have the corner here pointing to the hypotenuse. That's the longest side of our triangle. So I would say that X is our hypotenuse. That means we have the other two sides being the A and B. So this would be the C squared, which C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, or you can do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So this would be our proper equation that we would want to use to set up this equation. So we have here 10 squared. Okay, that's 100. 24 squared. What is that? 576 equals x squared. So I would just need to add those two values. That would be 676 equals x squared. And then we could take the square root of both sides. So square root, square root, that gives us our value for x. And that should be 26 equals x in this diagram. So now you're going to go ahead and try a triangle uh, if using Pythagorean theorem to solve for a missing side in a right triangle. So first, I'd like for you to decide um, which of these segments, x, 37, or 35, what is the hypotenuse? And then once you've created your equation using Pythagorean theorem, you're going to go ahead and solve for x. Okay, one more Pythagorean theorem example here. So again, we have our right angle pointing at the hypotenuse. So our hypotenuse in this diagram is 13. That means our equation should be we have our A and B sides. So x squared plus 8 squared equal to our c squared side. So this would be an equation that would work to create this. And so we would just need to basically square those values. So that gives us x squared plus 64. That is what 8 times 8 is. And equals 169. That is um, 13 times 13. So if we subtract a 64 on both sides, that gives us x squared, so I'm going up to the top here because I ran out of some space, equals 105. Now this is not going to be a whole number answer. I'm going to take the square root of 105 and I'm going to get an approximation for that. So when you take the square root, we know it's going to be close to 10. I'm not going to open up the Desmos scientific because it's going to move everything over, but um, in any calculator, you can do square root 105, and this should be about 10.25. So I'll put x equals 10.25. So you've got a decimal here. Now you're going to try one more um, Pythagorean theorem question on your own. So first decide which side is the hypotenuse, the x, the 6, or the 7. Then you're going to go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem and you are going to solve for x.
All right, we've got one more example here using, this is the converse Pythagorean theorem, which is on page 22 of your toolkit. <clears throat> so converse, remember if it's an acute triangle, C squared is less than A squared plus B squared. If it's a right triangle, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And if it's an obtuse triangle, C squared is greater than A squared plus B squared. So I'm just going to take these numbers. My 62 is the longest side. So I'm going to say, okay, what is the relationship between 62 squared and 11 squared and 60 squared? So I actually just have to take these values, square them, and find out if it's a, going to be a less than symbol, greater than, or equal to. So 62 multiplied with itself, or we'll say squared, is 3,844. Um, we've got 11 times 11, 121. And we've got 60 times 60. Well, 6 times 6 is 36. So we'll add two zeros here. Oops. And so let's compare. We've got 3, 8, 4, 4. And when we add these two together, it would be 3, 7, 2, 1. So we have a greater than symbol that would go here. So that means this triangle is obtuse. Okay, now you're gonna try that converse Pythagorean theorem here. Using the segment lengths 39, 80, and 87, would this be an acute, a right, or an obtuse triangle? And our last problem that we're going to do together here is the triangle inequality theorem. Remember, the two shortest sides when added together have to be longer than the longest side. So for this first problem here, I could add 13 plus 16. And 13 plus 16 is 29. 29 is not greater than 29. So this is no, not forming a triangle. It has to be greater, can't be equal. Here I can add the 14 and the 18. When I add those two together, it's 32. And I want to know is 32 greater than 30? It is, that works. This is a triangle. And then here I'm going to add 15 plus 20. When we add those two together, it is 35. 35 is greater than 40. So this is a triangle, yes. And then in your last question, um, we're finding the range between, um, if we know the two sides are 20, 20 and 25, we want to know what the smallest possible value could be for the third side or the largest possible value. So typically we write this with, as an inequality, a range of values. We would subtract these two numbers to get the smallest possible value for the third side being five. So technically you have to be bigger than five so that I can add five and 20 together and it would be bigger than the 25 that we already have. And then I would add 20 and 25 together and that would be 45 to find the range. So here we're subtracting our two values and here we're adding our two values. Okay, so we have one last problem that you're trying here. Okay, using the segment lengths 12, 15, and 20. Do those segment lengths create a triangle, yes or no? Okay, using the segment lengths 13, 17, 30. Do those create a triangle, yes or no? And then using the segment lengths 10, 20, and 35, do those create a triangle, yes or no? And then our last question here, 22 and 28 inches. If those are two sides for a triangle, we want you to find the range for the possible measures of the third side. 